Welcome back to More Than Gardening. I don't think I've made a long form video out here in the garden since my tour in September. So I'm really excited to make this video and take you through while I take the garden down for the season, go over what I learned this year because this is only my second year gardening and my first year gardening in this full raised bed garden that we built this year. So while a lot of things went really well and I'm super grateful for the harvest I've had, I have learned so much. There have been things that definitely have not gone as good this season as I expected or had hoped they would, but with those comes so much knowledge and so many learnings to bring into next year. I posted a question box on Instagram. Some of you wrote in some questions, so I'm gonna get to those as I go through. I'll make sure I touch on those topics, but I'm just gonna walk you through and let you know what I learned this season. We'll just have a fun little take the garden down and chat type of video. I got quite a few questions about irrigation, soil, and compost. I do not have an irrigation system. I don't have drip irrigation. I don't have anything that's automated. I relied on the rain and my hose. Now that worked really well in the spring and the early summer when it was really rainy. I never really had to drag the hose out. And then by midsummer, when it started getting really hot and dry and we didn't have rain for a few weeks, I had to take the hose out, which wasn't amazing. We're really far from our hose here in the garden. Like, I think I had to get a, I bought a new hose this year and I think it was like 200 feet. So dragging that out here is not fun. So I'm thinking about maybe looking into irrigation for next year, but it's only like a few weeks in the summer that I really had to do. I probably only had to use the hose about 10 times. And I don't know if it's worth installing irrigation just for 10 times. So with that said though, you need to have really good quality soil that retains moisture. That way you don't have to water as often. That way you can rely on the rain. I will say last year, I bought all store-bought soil from Home Depot and I was watering almost every single day. The soil was not hanging on to anything. I also used no compost last season. I was so green, no pun intended. I was so excited but new and I didn't really know what I was doing and the soil I got just it didn't like I said didn't hang on to any moisture so I was watering very often this year because we built all these raised beds I was not going to go one I wasn't going to get store-bought because I did that last year and it did not go well two if I were to buy soil from a store it was going to cost it was going to cost a crazy amount because of the price per bag so instead I ordered from a landscaper in bulk. I got a 50-50 blend of compost and topsoil. Ended up using two full truckloads plus some compost that I made plus a few bags of compost from the store. I have not found a store bought soil that I like yet. So I don't have a great recommendation there. However, if you are also looking to fill a large garden with soil, I recommend reaching out to your local landscaping company because if you're ordering bulk, it'll probably save you a lot of money. And in my experience, it's been really good quality. Up first is this small little bed here. This was my only garden last year. This year, I decided to put sunflowers in it, which are dying, and then zucchini. And I chose to put those plants here because this area has really bad soil. It's the same soil I had last year, which didn't retain any water and absolutely sucked. And it doesn't get very much sun. I put the zucchini here because they're so prolific that I just felt like even if I put them in the worst spot in the garden, they'll probably do well. And they did do well. I had five plants. I had more than enough zucchini, more than I will ever need. So next year, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Moving on to this next bed, this was my Roma tomatoes. And I definitely was experimenting with this bed this year. Plant spacing guidelines wants you to do like eight, anywhere from like 18 feet or 18 inches to like three feet between each plant. I wanted to see if that was totally necessary or not. So I went ahead and did about 18 inches between each plant and I fit 15 Roma tomato plants in this bed. and. I have learned that that is totally not the way to go because I think these plants underproduce the entire season. So next year, I'm probably going to cut it by about half and just do seven plants. Another thing I did way too much on these Romas is I way over pruned in the name of airflow. I thought I was helping the plants by getting more air to them by cutting a lot of lower leaves. And I cut some branches that I told myself weren't going to put any fruit on anyways, but I just did it totally wrong. And next year, I'm not gonna prune anything because my Roma harvest was a little pathetic for having 15 plants. 
Um, this Florida weave that I set up, I do have a short on this that I'll link if you want to know how to set this up. This was a great trellis for these Roma tomato plants. Um, and I'll leave probably these poles up. I will cut the strings. And as you're taking these plants out, the best thing to do, rather than going through and ripping out all these plants, I'm going to take my clippers and just cut at the base. And then to get through this weave, I will just cut probably at each section to try and pull it out. Or actually, that would be a lot easier. And then the herbs, these can just get pulled and these will go to compost. One reason I know that these underperformed is the size of the tomatoes were so small. And that is in comparison to one volunteer tomato plant that I had growing in my rock wall this year from a tomato that fell from last season. That one tomato plant put on probably the same amount of tomatoes as about five plants in this bed. And they were like this big, like they were huge. And these ones at the biggest were about like this big. Now, I don't know that they're the exact same Roma tomato variety, but the difference was enough to know that these ones did not perform the way they should have, probably because they were too dense and I pruned too much. These are cucumbers and green beans that I'm taking down. I'm just gonna cut them at the base again. And honestly, these did really well on this cattle panel trellis. I have a video on how we set this up. I'll link in the description. We've got probably over a year's worth of pickles canned and I don't know, maybe 20 pints of green beans. I'll have to count and put the number on the screen. One thing I will mention that I will actually do different next year is I'll do green beans and cucumbers on the cattle pans, on the cattle panels again, but I won't grow them together because the green beans would like hide behind the cucumber leaves. And it made harvesting really, really hard because cucumber leaves are like this big and the green beans are like this skinny and this long and they would just get lost and I would miss green beans all the time. So I'm gonna grow them on separate cattle panels next season. This next bed is the Cherokee purples and the beef steaks. And they were planted just as densely as the Romas. Um, they performed a little better being so close to each other when I totaled up my harvest and looked at like averages online for these tomato plants. I wasn't as disappointed as I was the Romas, but still next year, like the aromas, I am gonna plant them a little further apart. I'm probably gonna do just seven tomatoes in this bed. And the good part is I have been recording all of my harvest this year, weights and quantities. So I know exactly how this whole garden performed this year, planting densely like I have. And then I'll do it differently next year where I'll plant less densely. And then I'll be able to compare and really know how much of a difference it actually makes. This Florida weave was made with eight foot T posts from TSC. These raised beds are just under two feet and you lose about a foot when you hammer them in. So we're left with, what is that? Five foot to follow the plant as tall as it gets. And these were a great size for the Romas, the Cherokee purples and the beef steaks. So these will stay for next year. These marigolds were started from seed and they started out really, really terrible indoors. And I didn't think any of them were gonna make it. And then I put in them outside and they grew huge. You can see how big this one plant is. And then I also bought some marigolds when I thought these weren't gonna last from Home Depot and TSC. And I can't even find one now in any of these beds because they're probably dead. But once I planted those ones, they only got to be about this big and died. So I'm gonna start all my marigolds again from seed next year. So this trellis looks kind of disgusting. Everything is dying, but I had acorn squash and green beans on it. The green beans did really well. The acorn squash did not perform like I thought they would. There's even a few on there that are really, really small. I probably only got two decent sized ones that are about that big. And then the rest look like this. So I'm not 100% sure what happened with the acorn squash. I do think I started them maybe three or four weeks too late. So maybe they just didn't have the time in the growing season to get nice and big, but it was a bit of a fail and I need to try again next year. The green beans, however, they did do good. And I'm just finding one here that maybe we'll eat for dinner tonight. But like I was saying earlier with the cucumber trellis, I will not be planting green beans and acorn squash together again next year. These acorn squash leaves get even bigger than the cucumber ones. They're like this big and they totally block out and hide 
the green beans. And I missed so many green beans harvesting this year because they were just hidden. This is my garden step stool. It's a cinder block. Oh yeah. If you're short like me, I guess five, five and less, get one of these so you can reach your trellises. This next bed is my San Marzano tomatoes. And this was the highest producer for me for tomatoes. These are planted just as densely as the other two tomato plants. So 15 plants in this four by eight raised bed. And I got, what was it, over 700? I'll put the exact value on the screen. I think it was over 700 San Marzano tomatoes from this bed. He did show more signs of nutrient deficiency in the leaves. One of them had to be pulled earlier because it was yellowing a lot. I tried to save it with some Epsom salts. It worked for a little and then didn't. But overall, there weren't as many effects on these plants from being planted so densely like my other plants. The problem though with San Marzano's is they get so stupid tall that they have the same eight foot T post for the Florida weave that the other tomato plants had. But they grew like, I'm not kidding, they grew like up to here and then just like flopped over on to the other plants. And I think that if these would have been taller, like the 10 foot posts that we're gonna use next year, I think they would have just kept growing and growing and we would have gotten even more tomatoes. So pro with the San Marzano is the fact that they produce so many tomatoes and they're meaty, good, sweet tomatoes for sauces and salsas, but they grow so, so tall. You have to be able to manage them. Whoa. <laughs> Total destruction. I know. <laughs> this is the first of two raised beds Foldy with peppers. I really densely planted these two. I put 28 pepper plants per bed. And this one's a mixture of, whoa, can you even, these woody stems. Um, this is a mixture of banana peppers and jalapenos and poblanos. 28 total, which is a ton of peppers in an eight by four. Like the tomatoes, I wanted to see what densely planting them would do to the plants, what effects they would have on them. And these really, really thrived. One benefit to planting them so close together is that when we would have really strong winds in the early spring specifically, they would all blow everywhere. And because they were so close to each other, they would almost like support each other. I didn't use any stakes or cages or any trellising, trellising system in this bed with the bananas, jalapenos and poblanos because their neighbors were just able to hold them up. And if they weren't so close together, I think some of these plants would have snapped in the wind. So I basically trellis my peppers with other pepper plants. You can see as I'm cutting through these, it's really, really hard to clip through the stems because they have a really strong woody stem. I think mainly I achieved this because these plants are really, really old. For an annual, like a pepper in a zone like 6A here in Michigan, these plants are old for their time. I started these seeds in February, which is probably four to six weeks earlier than most people would, or four to six weeks earlier than the seed packets would, because I wanted to give them time to grow. And because of that, I have nice, thick, strong, woody stems that also contributes to them not snapping in the wind and a really, really healthy plant. And you'll see as I'm picking these, there's still some peppers left over. And honestly, I just don't need any more peppers. I have canned and frozen enough peppers for like probably two years worth. And I just don't need any more. So these will be composted. Peppers are really heavy feeders. And I thought I was gonna have to fertilize a lot more because I planted so densely. But I really didn't fertilize that much throughout the season. All I did was this was filled in the beginning with that 50-50 blend of topsoil and compost that I was talking about in the beginning. And I think I might have thrown a bag of cow manure in this bed. I know I put it, Dylan, behind the camera shaking, nodding his head yes, so I definitely did. Yeah. And I think that cow manure, as gross as it sounds, really did the trick because I did not heavily fertilize these once they were on the ground and they produced like crazy. And by crazy, I mean, I think I got close to 700 jalapenos. I think the exact number is 674. So a lot of peppers. This is another pepper bed. This is 28 peppers again in here. So super densely planted. I did bell peppers and jalapenos and they did just as good as the other bed. However, as the season went on and the bell peppers got bigger, I did have to add a few stakes for support. The weight 
of the bell peppers on the plants were just totally tipping them over. And I found these to help a lot so that the peppers weren't just falling and touching the ground. One thing that I am gonna do differently with the bell peppers specifically next year is I'm not gonna top them. I topped all of my pepper plants this year because I honestly just needed them to be shorter because I started them so early, they're growing so fast. I needed a smaller plant to fit under my grow lights. So I topped everything. All the other plants, all the other peppers did really well with topping. They branched out earlier. They produced a ton of peppers. The bell peppers, I think that slowed the growth down because I did not get as many bell peppers as I thought I would this season. Next year, I will not be topping my bell pepper plants. This section over here is my flower garden and some grow bags around it. The flowers are really crusty and dusty and gross and they need to come out. This was my first year growing any sort of flower. I did snapdragons, the bride's bachelor's buttons, zinnias, and I think that's it. And they all did really well. I really love the zinnias. They're great for beginner gardeners. So if you've never done flowers, highly recommend starting with the zinnias. I started them from seed just straight into the garden and they did really well. Next year, I'm not gonna use this for flowers. I'm gonna go ahead and put peppers in it and the grow bag surrounding the bed, I'm gonna do flowers because I think it's just gonna look really pretty to have all the flowers on the outside as like a nice little border. And then in here, these black grow bags, I got these from Amazon two years ago. I didn't realize how crappy they were until this year. They don't hold in any moisture. They're not lined on the outside. I have some Epic Gardening ones that are lined, so they keep moisture in. And these ones, it's like as soon as you water them, all the water just flows out the bottom and flows out the sides. So they were absolutely terrible. I will not be using these next year. Um, in the grow bags this year, I had a little bit of a fail. I did my cayenne peppers here and my Thai chilies here. The oregano, that did okay. Um, but specifically the hot, hot peppers, I don't really know if they got enough sun because they were being shaded by these really big flowers. So I'm gonna put these in raised beds next year, hopefully to get more sun and produce better. And lastly, these are my tomatillos. I have four grow bags and six tomatillo plants. So one thing I learned about growing tomatillos this year is my first year growing them, is that we absolutely love tomatillos. If you've never had them, they are just delicious and they are perfect for making green salsa. So next year I will be growing way, way more. And these are in those crappy black um, grow bags with pretty crappy store-bought soil in most of them. These got eaten up by pests. I didn't do a good job. I didn't put enough marigolds in them. So they got eaten up. Right now they look gross because it's end of season, but honestly, they didn't really look like they were thriving all season. And I think that was a combination of pets, poor soil, and these grow bags that didn't retain any moisture. So next year, these are gonna go in a raised bed and I'm gonna surround them with hot peppers like the cayennes. I was just telling you guys about Thai chilies, maybe habaneros or just anything really hot seems to deter pests. I didn't have any pest problems with my hot peppers this season, and I think the pests just don't like them because they're so spicy. And that's it. I can't believe that this season is officially over. Thanks for following along all season on my garden tour videos and all the shorts of the harvest. I'm already really looking forward to starting seeds next spring. Onions start in January, so only three more months until that. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment. And make sure to subscribe to see more of my gardening and canning content. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.